The woman host of a local television broadcast shot herself in the head while the program was on the air. 30-year-old Chris Chubuck is in critical condition tonight. So today, we're going to talk about one of the most forbidden pieces of media that was ever made. And what is that, you might ask? There was that thing involving Christine Chubbuck. Well, that was recorded, so we're going to talk about it today. So, you know, some people might not like this stuff. But if you do, that's cool. We're not going to get real deep into the event. We're just talking about the recorded media. And that's really what we're talking about. We're going to talk a little bit about Christine herself. I think it's important for context. On July 15, 1974, this tragic but historic event was not only viewed by thousands on live TV, it was also recorded in the studio at WXTL in Sarasota, Florida. So this is back in the day, even before people had Walkmans or any kind of digital media, there was no MP3s, there were no iPods, there was none of that stuff. All you had back then was magnetic recording tape. So what is analog tape? Analog recording tape is taking a magnetic plastic strip that are either on a cassette or naked on the reels. So you take that tape and you run it over two electronic devices called heads. One head is designed for recording by changing the magnetic signal on the tape and the other head is designed for reading that magnetic signal and turning it into an, an electronic signal while the other components of the video or audio recording device change that electronic signal into an audio or video signal. So the video recording format that was used in the studio that day was actually two inch quadruplex recording tape, Ampex branded tape, and it had a formula that was actually more resistant to oxidation than others. Magnetic tape actually has a metallic coating, and that metallic coating will rust just like any other steel or iron because it is steel or iron. I'm not really exactly what the formula is, but I'll, I'll put it in the screen right there. So this oxidation can actually degrade the video and audio signal. So eventually, it doesn't actually exist anymore. So let's talk about Christine Chubbuck herself for a second. Christine Chubbuck was born on August the 24th, 1944 in Hudson, Ohio. She worked at several TV stations between 1966 and 68 before working four years as a computer operator at a hospital. Eventually, she moved to her family's summer cottage grove in Sarasota, Florida. She worked at a few TV stations before getting hired at the local ABC affiliate station WXTL in 1973. She was initially hired as a reporter, but soon she actually got her own community affairs show. This show was described by the station as a show that would feature local people and local activities. It would give attention, for instance, to the storefront organizations that are concerned with alcohol, drug use, and other law segments of the community. Her co-workers described her as having a very good work ethic and a strong interior, but also being very insecure and dealing with a lot of depression issues. Chris also had a problem dealing with romantic rejection. She had actually expressed interest in one of her co-workers and her co-workers unfortunately had rejected her and this led her to a, how shall we say, deeper depression. Believe it or not, she was 29 and she was a virgin so this was weighing hard on her. She had her ovaries removed the year before and she was told that she might not have kids if she didn't have kids soon so it builds up. She also objected to a lot of the violent glorification that was happening at the station, which is quite of ironic considering how she is known in television history. This is undoubtedly a part of television history. Another more interesting aspect of this whole case is that Christine Chubbuck actually requested that her last time on air be recorded. It's almost as if she wanted it to become part of history. So we're going to check out two different forms of media. One is a video and the other is just audio. The video was uploaded to a YouTube channel by the name of Nation Squib on January of 2017. And when I first saw the video, I don't know, it just didn't hit me right. First of all, it didn't sound right. All that high frequency and old analog equipment seems odd, unless it's distorting, and it's distorting. 
the video kind of looks like you would expect it to, but it doesn't have that buttery look that old analog videotape usually has. Now the desk in the scene is identical. It does look the same. I have to admit, it totally looks the same. But as a whole, it just didn't sit right with me. It didn't seem... Right. And there is actually audio of Christine Chubbuck available. And to be honest, it doesn't sound the same at all. Really, the end of the line of Sarasota County, which Northport is, um, what are the needs of your community now, not two years from now? But here's what Gordon Galbraith said when he was shown this. Gordon was a reporter at WXTL, and he was actually viewing the live screen at the time of the event. And he went on the record to say, it's fake. There was only one camera present, and that was the studio camera. And the second it happened, the camera was on a full shot of her. This was a one camera show. And for those who actually saw it, it was much closer up. But to anybody else, this here would seem authentic. Even the dropouts of the used tape we employed. So you take that statement by Gordon and all the other evidence together, and it just doesn't seem real to me. I think it's fake. I'm pretty sure that most would agree it's a fake as well. So in early 2021, a YouTuber by the name of Atalist, at least I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that the way it's supposed to be, uploaded a YouTube video that actually appeared to be a cassette recording of the event. Check it out, y'all. Sarasota police report the finding of an 18 year old, a man by the name of David Wynn, in the parking lot of Friendly Tavern on 27th Street. Wynn had an apparent stab wound in the chest, which, according to witnesses, was inflicted by James Whitworth during a fight. Police charge Whitworth with aggravated assault. Wynn is in satisfactory condition at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. The second attempt at armed robbery in a week has involved law enforcement officers from both Sarasota and Manatee counties. Last week, teenage gunmen held up the highway bar and after a shootout and high-speed automobile chase, held a family hostage and finally were nabbed by Sarasota Sheriff's deputies. Early Sunday morning, the Beef and Bottle restaurant north of Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41 was the site of an attempted armed robbery and shooting. TV40 newsman Bob Peterson was on the scene shortly after it began, and he filed this report. I'm sorry, for those of you who saw late night weekend news watch last night, we did have a film report and a commentary by Bob Peterson. Unfortunately, we had technical difficulties and cannot bring it to you now. However, the watch news watch tonight at 5 30 and we'll have that story for you then. As of this morning, Foster, Grace Foster, who was shot in that incident, is in satisfactory condition at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. In keeping with the WXLT practice of presenting the most immediate and complete reports of local. Oh, sorry about that. We're just going to cut the last part out. This video is relatively easy to online, so please feel free to check it out and tell me what you think. So the first thing I notice is how strikingly similar the voice in this audio recording is to the known video recordings of her. Really, the end of the line of Sarasota County, which Northport is, um, what are the needs of your community now, not two years from now? Sarasota police report the finding of an 18-year-old, a man by the name of David Wynn, in the parking lot of Friendly Tavern on 27th Street. Quite amazing, actually. It's impressive. I think it would be very, very hard to fake that. So let's, uh, so let's take just a closer look at the video and examine parts of it. How about it? So if you notice in the very first second or two of the video, it's uh, very hard to understand. Um, the audio signal is is lower, and it's got a lot less of the high end frequency. So I can tell you by experience, I'm old enough that I made mixed cassette recordings for friends. I actually did this. And a lot of times you would want 
to skip over the first few seconds of tape available because it just didn't sound as good. It never did. This is just simply caused by oxidation. The tape surface exposed to the air the most frequently is going to be more oxidized than the rest of the tape. And it sounded very similar to what this sounds like. And what it really reminded me is, is of those little cassette portable recording devices that were very commonly available at that time. So while I was researching for this, I was looking through the police reports and I found what was listed as evidence and literally what it said there is this is a tape of a tape and I'm thinking a tape of a tape so that a videotape that two inch quadruplex tape could usually only be played back on the same machine that it was recorded on so it could be that keeping that two inch tape as evidence wasn't practical because it couldn't be viewed as opposed to having a audio cassette recording of it that was very easy to obtain and a cassette tape could be played back on any cassette deck. The very first four or five words are actually encased with ellipses. And as we all know from grammar, ellipsis indicates uncertainty. So to me, it clearly indicates that they couldn't quite understand those first few words and they wanted to make it sure that they couldn't understand it by encasing it in ellipses. And in the recording, the first word that I can hear clearly is statistics. And that's the first word after the words encased with the ellipses. So as the transcript goes on, it actually matches word for word the cassette audio recording, even to this, even to a slight stutter that happened in the middle of the recording. Enforcement officers from both Sarasota and Manatee counties. Last week, teenagers. Now, it does appear in the middle of recording there was some kind of edit, though I'm not 100% sure if this is a digital edit or an analog edit, but I'm inclined to believe that it's actually a digital edit. And it seems to edit out the part where Chris introduces a B-roll story that she wanted to have ran. Unfortunately, the tape machine screwed up, and it does seem in the police reports there was some kind of communication that would have taken seconds long, and in the recording, it's an immediate change. Another really interesting thing about this video is if you listen very closely toward the end of the video, you can actually hear a little bit chatter, which to me sounds like the cops whispering to each other as it's being recorded, indicating maybe possibly to the other officers what's going to happen. And very soon after the gun blast goes off, you hear somebody either gasping or saying, wow. So in conclusion, I'm pretty convinced that the first video, I think it's an absolute fabrication. It's a good fabrication, but it's a fabrication. But the cassette audio, yeah, I think it's real. I think it's absolutely real. So today we know that a law firm is in possession of the tape. Who knows the condition of the tape? It could be completely oxidized by now. It is getting to the end of its lifespan and will be lost if it isn't dubbed off soon. So tell me what you think. Do you think the tape should never be revealed? Do you think that it should? What's up? I want to know your opinion.